everybody. Welcome back to another BNZ World Report where we discuss global topics and events around the world. I'm your boy, Poetic Mike, and I'm filling in for my homegirl, Angela Ray. Now we're out here in the beautiful downtown Durham, AKA Bull City, where we are definitely enjoying a beautiful morning. Now, our first story is about Mary J. Blige. Now, I don't know if any of you are a fan of her like I am, but if you are, you definitely want to know what's the 411, hun. Now, recently, Mary achieved getting her diploma, AKA GED, and this is a good thing because for many of you that feel like it's too late, that's definitely a good example of the fact that it's not. Now, she will be taking some online courses for college, so we know that definitely Mary J. does not have no more drama. What flavors did you say you had? We got vanilla, hazelnut, caramel, um, pumpkin spice. Right. Ooh, that's some good coffee right there. There's nothing like good coffee early in the morning. And this good coffee comes from Blue Coffee Cafe, which is a successful black owned business in downtown Durham. Now, our next story definitely screams achievement. Now, many of you may be familiar with the Bob Marley song where he said, I remember a government town in Trenchtown. Now, that kind of connotes the fact that there's hardcore struggles going on in Jamaica itself. One person that was able to overcome these hardcore struggles was Hardcore Fuller. Now, he recently achieved getting his PhD at the London School of Economics. He never had the opportunity to attend traditional high schools, but he did have the opportunity to be raised in the family of nine children by some very good parents that instilled in him that a sound education is a necessary tool for overcoming adversity in Jamaica. Way to go, hardcore. Now, let's join Team BNZ in the field and see what's popping with them. Oh. <laughs> you look great. <laughs> We have a retreat today to talk about the future of the program. We had our first year which was successful, but we want to make sure that we can ensure that success ongoing and I think it's important to engage the participants, the future participants and the staff in a discussion and dialogue so that we all remain on the same page and we all remain committed to the same goals. Some of my aspirations now is to eventually go to law school. Um, and become an entertainment lawyer. Well, thank you for today. Thank you for what you said this morning. Thank you for uh, having Satina's College Program where he comes together and events everyone in the room and the, all the other African American males. One of the him. programs that I started last year was the Centennial Scholars Program. It's a program geared towards African American males. We really want to take African American males and their initial onset of arriving on the campus and create an environment for for success. The goal is for them to obtain and achieve and maintain a 3.0 or higher their entire collegiate experience. So it's a cohort program that works with them from their first year through their fourth year and we want them to graduate in four years and have options. We want them to have the option to go into professional school, graduate school, or in whatever career they desire because they have the foundation that prepares them to be successful in whatever they choose to do. And I also want to become a sports agent as well. So yeah, just come to law school and just become a successful black man. Now that was definitely a great story. So big ups to NCCU's Dr. Kevin Rohn for his African American Leadership Program. Now our next story is one that really touches my heart. Now many of you were encountering the songs Circle of Life and Akuna Matata in The Lion King. Well, there was a young lady by the name of Shannon Tavares who's 11 years old from out of Bell Rose, Queens, New York. Now she got the opportunity to play the role of young Nayla, which was the lion cub in the Lion King Broadway musical. Well, six months into her role of playing it, and she did a wonderful job as a voice soprano, she came down with the diagnosis of myeloid leukemia. Now, for those of you that do not know what myeloid leukemia is, 
It is when the rapid growth of abnormal white blood cells occur in the bone marrow and they interfere with the growth of normal blood cells. Now, she is in the hospital at this moment fighting this disease and they're about to do a bone marrow drive for her due to the fact that her parents are African-American and Hispanic and they are very underrepresented in the uh, donor registries. So we would definitely want to keep her in our prayers and say, go get them, tiger. Or should I say, lioness. Now I know that many of you noticed my nice little Yankee fitted cap on the top of my head and I know a lot of you wear them as well. But do you know the history of the owner behind the New York Yankees? Well recently he just passed away at the age of 80 after owning the New York Yankees for almost more than 37 years. Now if you don't know about him or for those of you that are New York Yankee fans or historians you remember him for his outbursts and his unorthodox ways of the way he handled things with the referees, the officials and even people and administrators in the league itself. Now. That's one thing that you can always remember about George Steinbrenner. So we definitely want to say rest in peace, Steinbrenner. Now, I am glad that you joined us today for another BNZ World Report. I want you to join us again. And for more news to know, you can join us at brandnews.com. Peace, y'all.